Hello ladies and gentlemen of the PBO YouTube channel and fans of competitive Pokemon everywhere. We are here. I am the New York Malamar, Zach, and I'm here with King Dozo. Yo, what's up everyone? Actually, a little bit of a name change, guys. Not King Dozo anymore. I've just changed over to Mr. Dozo, but uh, yeah, the coach of the Kumok about great tasks. My man has become one of yeah. the people. Come down from the hierarchy yeah. of royalty to join us, us the common folk. But we're here. We're going to do some sunset draft analysis. You can see these numbers on your screen. This is not the team rankings yet, ladies and gentlemen. This are just this is the draft order. We'll be revealing the team rankings as we go through and we review these teams one by one. Dozo, anything you want to say before we get started? Uh, not really. I'm pretty excited. This is um, essentially the division that I won last season. A uh, little bit of uh, controversy clouding that, but the final was a straight-up blast. Um, good to see the team that uh, got, unfortunately, DQ'd against me, made main leg anyway. Um, but so th this is this division here, guys, is um, quickly, it's, it's like just not ready for the main division or that's been relegated from the main division. So there's a hell of a lot of talent in here. Um, just a few names that I'm looking at here that are, I know can uh, match it with the Top Guns, like uh, the Sin City Sableyes, Swadloons, Teddy Ursus. I know them guys could uh, definitely, definitely make it up top. Okay, here we go. First slide, we have Sin City Sableyes. Uh, here we have Sun, ladies and gentlemen. We have This is definitely going to be the fan favorite of this division, having three paradox forms of the legendary beasts. Yes, we have Gouging Fire, Raging Bolt, and Walking Wake all on one team, supported by Nine Tails. Maybe your favorite Sunsetter, but it's definitely the prettiest one. We have Diancy, a very solid Terror Captain, always a threat to sweep, can support, can set up a lot of hazards. Scovillain will surprise people with the power it has and what it can send out if people are not prepared for this thing to Terror Fire or Terror Grass. Or they gave a Terra Electric, a little bit interesting. I don't know if that's necessary when we already have the grass coverage, but it's something that they'll have to prepare for. The bottom half we might feel a little sketchy about, but in terms of the positives, what do you think, Dozo? Yeah, very much agree. I'm a big fan of um, Nine Tails personally. This generation now that has access to Baton Pass, um, Healing Wish, um, just purely you can run that thing, uh, bring it in um, multiple occasions running Healing Wish out into a Gouging Fire, giving a Gouging Fire two lives or a Walking Wake two lives. Um, as we spoke about a little bit off screen, the team really doesn't have a good fighting resist, a good uh, fairy resist, and a or well, outside Sizzle, but Sizzle can get worn down. Plenty of fairies carry Mystic Fire these days. Um, but yeah, I'm a, a really big fan of the power game. Like This team is obvious. It's going to get lead Nine Tails. It's going to bat and pass out into... Um, Walking Wake, and if you can't switch into Walking Wake, Walking Wake's going to flip turn into uh, Gouging Fire or um, Raging Bolt. Like this team is just, it's built to run over you, and then you've got a low, a low tier, uh, sorry, a low tier, low pick, and then pick 11 Ursa Luna there that could blow you away as well. So um, I think Ursa Luna fits in really, really nice when it comes to switching with water because this team, you just don't bring water against this team, so it makes Ursa Luna infinitely better. Um, as well as Diancy. Okay, we can see, to my eye, this seems to be running some type of secondary mode trick room with Glastria, Ursaluna, and Diancy as the Terror Captain. I don't know how effective that will be, more than a gimmick that'll work once or twice. I think we might be more akin to add a ground resist and or a fighting resist, as Dozo said, because we can't just play under the assumption the sun's always going to be up and things are going to go well. So outside of the sun, this team is slow. We have the max speed on Walking Wake. I think Sawsbuck is only 95. So we got the max speed on Walking Wake. It's somewhere around 104, I believe. So I think this team could be do well with a Superior, which I saw in the free agent pool as a, at least a relatively decent ground resist to give you glare support and then some more speed outside of the sun. And uh, Or if you just want to you know, lean into this sun meme and just be all offense, Blaziken sitting right there, Sin City. You're already the fan favorite. Just lean into it, pick up the Blaziken, and just speed boost Flare Blitz through everything. But we have you won't. Seven, you won't be disappointed. You would not be disappointed. I could. I could see that man bringing a charcoal overheat Flare Blitz 
Blaziken. That would be that would be something this man do would it do. Do for the he, content. Do it for the good. people. We demand Blaziken um, on this team. One thing I think this team could definitely do with Zao is um, I definitely think we could. Uh, we didn't. I didn't even think about it earlier, but I really think instead of removal, um, you could almost take a drop the that saws buck out of here, or um, just consolidate a little bit, change a few things, and bring in an Espion. I think an Espion yeah. would fit in this roster absolutely fantastically, filling speed tiers um, that. It, he struggles a little bit with, and um, magic bounce would be just make it hard to bring hazards. Yep, and yep. you really, it's really this team is hard to set up hazards on. So I guess that's sort of what he's banking on. That's true, and we, you know, the Sun teams often run Hatterene, so we could get the budget Hatterene Espion fill a couple of holes. That's a good suggestion. Again, we have a Sin City mm. at seven. Let's see what's next, and we have our top contender, the number one ranked team. The Santa Cruz Swadaloons. The only time Swadaloon has ever been associated with rank one. Does you want to go first? He's on return. Yeah, he went. He went MIA last season. He had a break, a bit like me this season. He, he went went had a break, and I tell you what, he'd come back and looking fresh. Um, just that that Steel Dragon Fairy Core picking that up first three mons is absolutely nuts. With all three of those mons being hugely versatile. Then he's gone in and grabbed Melodic, which is a bit of a gloom on to any team. I think Melodic is there with right there with Rotom, Wash, and probably um what's the other mon I'm thinking of? Uh Alola Mamola at the moment as like top tier water bulkies. Um I could be, you know, you could throw Swamp Birds and Sweetcoons and that in there, but I really think those three are really, really solid at the moment. Ogre Pond's probably one of the best leads in the game. Mammoth Swine, you can't switch into. A really big spit F wall. I've used Cryogon on myself in the past. Love it. Um, I'm a huge Reggie Alecki guy, so my, my guy. Use Supercell Slam and just choice ban that thing. It'll just cook. Um, Typhlosion, solid. Why the hell is that bird here? And Vivalon is Vivalon. Yeah, so I, I like Pretty this team hard. a lot. I like this team a lot. There's a, so much talent here. S strong priority. In Dragonite, every Ogre Pond always has the ability to sweep. The Rock one is very underrated because 100% accurate, powerful Rock move is very, very strong. Uh, ice also ground the coverage. Champ. Go ahead, Dozo. It's also the current champ. Ogre Pond did win the, win a title, was a part of a title winning team last season, so right. it's very, very solid, Mon. Uh, Mama Swine. Oh, can I just inter interject one more time? Yeah, Sorry. Um, no problem. Go ahead. Interrupt. I just want to let everyone know that the terror system this season, which we didn't touch on in Drew's team, is uh, and I haven't got the points on that each mon cost on the slide. That's a just a bit a bit of an oversight. But um, the terror system is you have 150 separate terror points to your ter to your team budget, and um, you pick can pick any Pokemon from um, in your lower budget mon. So. Anything from ninety points and down to ten points can be terror captains as long as and long as they add up to one hundred and fifty points. One stab plus two types. Sorry. No problem. And okay, so I was gonna say Mamoswine, ground and ice coverage is excellent. If you've ever been even if you go through some of these teams we're about to speak about, if you really analyze it and said if something had earthquake and icicle crash, would it run through this team? The answer is almost always yes. So Trailblaze, Mamoswine, something that just got this generation. Don't sleep on it here. Also powerful priority, one of the strongest ice shards in the game. Uh, we two cannon. I had my eye on as a Terra captain, but without that, I agree. I don't. It seems very out of place here. The only change I think I would make to this team is it undercover has a has an ice weakness. Uh, physical ice moves, Milotic, yeah. not that bulky on the physical side, unless you're going to run the Marvel scale set with the Flame Orb. And uh, Namaswine is a pseudo check with thick fat, but again, I'm not counting that as anything that's substantial. So maybe you trade the two cannon out for something, uh, even a low tier bulky water. Um, the, the middle evolution of Quaquaval is a 10 point mon. I thought that would be pretty good in that spot. Just an Eviolite has spin, has roost. I think that in that spot, it's all. This is already the best team, but I think that would patch up the one. Like, what's your back's caliber answer when it comes? Just your one thing against the other top teams, where you have to be very specific with one Pokemon. How are we dealing with this? Other than that, I think this is 
relatively solidly the best team by maybe 5%. Um, yeah. Anything else um, like to say, Dozo? I actually, I, I, I look at Cryogonal and I go, and I'm just, I really would have liked Electric over Poison Terror on Cryogonal. I get, like, I don't think Poison really fits this team, uh, f- fits the Terror on Cryogonal because um, he does, it's it's not grounded, so I can't soak up Toxic Spikes. Um, and Cryogonal, I think there would have been nice to have Bolt Beam coverage or how does he beat, like, if you give it Fire or you gave it Ground Typing, which I think Fire would have been phenomenal for this roster, to tell you the truth. Um, just having a way to break steals would have been really, really nice because it can use, between Ice Beam, Freeze Dry, and, you know, Terra Blast Fire, it could have been really, really solid. Um, or Terra Ground is always pretty, pretty tanky. But other than that, um, as you mentioned, yeah, I've got nothing really else to improve on. It's just that the Terra Poison... Um, to a uh, terror fire is probably the biggest thing with your suggestions of two cannon. I don't mind two cannon if it was a terror captain. I, I, I agree with you there. Okay. Let's see what's next. That was okay, our number one, one team. And we're going on to what should be the number two team. Oh yeah. Can you change that bro? Sorry. That's my bad. Oh no. Everyone. Oh, no. Yeah, I, I might be able to change it. Okay, yeah, you you change it while I keep this up, and we will talk about um, Teddy Ursa. Okay, so barring our technical difficulties, ladies and gentlemen, we have six tokens here. Six tokens has a super balanced team. This is really a tremendous setup. Uh, Rotom Wash plus Heatran is a classic core, covering all. You know, the main weaknesses of both almost perfectly. You know, Fizz Def, Rotom Wash, especially Defensive Heatran, is super hard and annoying to break. With Mons that can spread status, uh, Heatran can do a ton of damage, Heatran can trap. Be cool if Heatran still had Toxic, but still Magma Storm, Protect, Will-O-Wisp, Earth Power, still a tremendous set. Garchomp, round one pick. Again, this is an old school team, minus uh, Annihilate, this top three. Again, Garchomp protected almost perfectly by Heatran. That pairing is classic. I hope to see offensive Garchomp on this team. I do not think this team needs Tank Chop. It needs Swords Dance, Earthquake, Choice Ban, maybe even Choice Scarf, Life Orb, all kinds of crazy stuff. Let's see it. Annihilate Round 4 is criminal and ridiculous. I do not know why this thing is going so late nowadays, but guys, it's still crazy. Whatever they told you, it's not really that good. It is. It's really that good. It's the best at protecting hazards in the game because instead of Golden Go, who just neutralizes the removal, Annihilate punishes the removal in almost every conceivable way. I'm not the biggest Aloma Mola fan, to be truthful with you, but on this team, passing Wishes to Garchomp and Heatran and Rotom Wash, for that matter, does seem really good. Gives you momentum. I'm a big Pheasantipity fan. I really like it. I think rolling the Grounded Poison and Fairy into one Mon is useful in a lot of ways, more than uh, it's a drawback from gaining the Earthquake and the Psychic res- uh, weaknesses. I think it brings a lot of utility. I'm a huge Mian Shell fan. I think it's one of the more interesting Pokemon in the game as a really offensive uh, Regenerator Mon, able to use Life Orb, brings priority, brings switching, Huge move pool, all kinds of different things you can do with this thing. Uh, the Cyclozar, I'm not against the tear on Cyclozar. I just think, especially on this team, I think it's always going to end up being utility. So you probably want more bulk on it. I, I don't, you wouldn't put it on anything else on this team, so I guess sure. But I think in a perfect world, maybe we had one more offensive mod to put this tear on because I don't know that it will ever actually be used on. Cyclozar, other than by happenstance, but tremendous uh, utility mon. Can be surprisingly offensive with Terra, though. Knackle Stack, maybe the best Terra captain in the in the league, was on my championship team last season. Um, Salt Cure, they, um, they have to prepare for it. This can easily sweep a team if it's not prepared for it. It'll probably get at least one sweep this season with Body Press. Spadef Iron Defense is a very dangerous set with Salt Cure on it. Uh... Prankstermon, Meowstic, can Thunder Wave things with Prankster, set up screens, 
doesn't have no offense, can just also nasty plot and be weird and maybe do something. And Tropius was on a team for Alabama Alakazam that went to the finals, I believe, which got some sweeps or something. Like, And I know it doesn't seem like it'll do anything, but if you've seen this thing in random battles, it does things. Uh, Doza, what are you thinking about uh, Six Tokens team? Um, I'm, I pretty much agree with everything, to tell you the truth. Um, I personally ag- agree with you on the Cyclazar, um, but also I don't hate him taking Cyclazar's Dragon Weakness off it with a Garchomp there, or taking that Ice Weakness away, um, because the team is actually pretty solid against Ice types. There is no Chien power this season, um, thankfully. Um, and I 100% that agree that um, Knacklestack could be absolutely a, one of the best Terra captains of the season. Uh, I don't think it's the best in the top. So I know you, you've used it. I don't think it's the best Terra captain, but I d- definitely think it's it's going to be up there in a pain. And exactly what you said, if you don't prepare for um, Salt Cure, you could just very well lose. Um, especially with this thing actually gets blocked. So you could run Iron Defense, Spidef, Recover with Salt Cure, and then all of a sudden the big threat um, that maybe thought it could beat you can't. Um, yeah, I like the Terrors on it. I think the Terrors on it are good. Um, I think Tropius, the only real thing if he's going to keep Tropius there is is make Terra steal on Tropius. Um, that's about it. Okay, that's a very. I, I'm a big, I'm a huge, huge Mianchao guy. Massive, massive Mianchao fan. It's probably one of my favorite fighting types. Um, doubling up on the fighting type doesn't really concern this team, but at the same time, it doesn't. It's weird because the weeks he brings Ape, he's probably not going to bring Mianchao. Um, so, like, you might look at this team and go, oh, he's got heaps of this, he's got heaps of weakness on this, he's got heaps of weakness for that. Well, like Psychic, for example, or um, well, Psychic's the main one there for those big threats. Um, but between, as you mentioned, that the best, most iconic defensive core in Heatran and Rotom in draft history, probably. Um, yeah, though it all covers well. Um, one thing is his speed, excluding Cyclozar, his tops out at 105. So um, that was a little bit of a worry, but this team is going to beat you down. Um, I think there's another balanced team later. We have the the grade of uh, a little bit lower, like a lot lower than this, but I think this team offers that a little bit more immediate pressure. Um, and Alola Mamola, um, I got swept. I, I learned my lesson with Alola Mamola um, against the Backscaliber two seasons ago. Um, so if he uses Alola Mamola well, which we know Tokyo will, um, it's going to be a huge pain in the backside, passing wishes into this whole team with that base 160 HP as well. Yeah. Um, I couldn't figure out. I'm sorry. I'm I'm on my iPad. I'm looking at this game on my iPad. I'm trying to change the the grade now. Oh, it's all good. Um, but I can only. Yeah. So six don't to- stress. To- to- yeah, that's it. is supposed to be two, ladies and gentlemen. It's supposed to be two. Yeah. Okay. Let's move. Let's let's move on to the next one. Yeah. Um. And one one word of advice: six tokens. Don't let Heatran die in your games, or it's going to be a bad day for you. Okay. Here we go. Yeah. Cherry Hill Bell Sprouts, we have ranked nine. This is a very interesting team to me because it's so close to being like maybe the number one team. I Dragapult, most people would say it's the best Pokemon in the format. I think Petron. Let me just is say how did Dragapult good. make it to how did Dragapult get to round four? Oh, I don't think it, oh, you mean pick four? Yeah. I don't know. Pick four. I don't know. People get bored with it. Well, so, Some people don't think yeah. it's good. They don't think it's good. Yeah. Yeah, it's fair enough. It's fair enough. Um, but Petron, I think, is absolutely crazy. It's new, so not everybody has seen what this guy does yet. This is an amazing physical wall that also spin blocks, confuses on Toxic. And Toxic is much more valuable nowadays, guys, because everything doesn't have it. And having that tool in your toolbox is extremely useful. This thing can also set up very easily on things you think will check it. So, for instance, they send out Skarmory. They think, oh, it can't hit me with the Toxic or the Malignant Chain. Then I Nasty Plot twice and sweep you. Uh, It has Parting Shot out to get momentum. It has Reliable Recovery. 
It doesn't need to run Black Sludge, so it can almost always run Rocky Helmet. It almost doesn't even need to run Berries on it because even Knockoff does nothing to this guy. This guy essentially takes no physical damage from anything that doesn't have at least a Swords Dance set up. It's really a crazy guy. I can't say enough about it. Um, Thunderous Therian is a super valuable Pokemon that I think gets overlooked sometimes. 145 Special Attack is massive. And the fact it really just needs Thunderbolt, Volt Switch, and Grass Knot, and then it can still run U-Turn to have momentum. It's a really good AV user. You can always be safe with boots. Even just Expert Belt, Life Orb, has a ton of sets on it. Agility, Bulky Thunderous with Agility can sweep late game. Tremendous Pokemon. Tentacruel, very good glue piece, uh, giving you surprising speed and offense. It's always a utility Pokemon, but it still has, I believe, 100 and 100 special attack. And speed with huge special defense. It's a very good spadef wall. The typing is very good. Absorbs the toxic spikes. Can set the toxic spikes. Rapid spin. Again, it has toxic. Uh, a lot of things also here, guys. Spreading status to help the Dragapult to just... Maybe we'll see Specs Dragapult with Hex at one point. Pretty good set. Um, Appleton, I think, is a really, really good Terra Captain. One of the more high-value ones for only being 30 points. Can become super annoying... If it's Terra Fairy or Terra... I would like to see Terra Water on this. Usually I think that's better. Um, but Steel and Fairy are still standard types. Like, it's not bad at all. Um, Dozo, before we go into things we might change about this team, what do you think about the positives? Uh, I'm looking I'm looking at the, the probably one of the best defensive mons with a huge Spadefmon in Glyscore. That call right there is phenomenal. Um, the Toxic... As you just mentioned, and you touched on the Toxic, I can see an Ogie Dogie there that can run uh, Fake Out with the Toxic Chain. I'm looking at uh, the Metal Ignite Chain uh, shenanigans uh, from Petra Run. Toxic off of Gliscor, Toxic Spikes, all that sort of stuff. Toxic Spikes from uh, Tenacruel. I'm looking at Hex. I'm looking at you, Dragapult. I'm looking at Choice Specs Hex. This team is built to run Choice Specs Hex, and that's it. Um, I, I think Thundee might even get Hex. I'm not 100% sure. Um, I'm pretty sure Sableye gets now gets dual screens, so dual screens with Sableye is obviously going to be some sort of a plan. Um, like offensively, I see a lot of I see a lot of value, but if you can shut down the one, maybe if you if you bring a good special wall, I think you're uh, you're in with a shot beating breaking this team down because Dragapult is looking very much as much as it wants to run hex every week, it's looking like it's going to want to be physical due to this team not having a physical attacker outside of Bogey Dogey, which is a little bit slow. Um, and this team is mono-weak to Psychic, pretty much, um, with a huge amount of the team not liking Psychic. And like, Psychic with um, U-turn coverage is pretty, pretty common. Um, if, if they're coming off, each team's going to have a decent breaker. But at the end of the day, not every team's going to have that big Psychic damage. I don't think Amaru's even got drafted. Um, so I don't think Indeedy got drafted. What would you recommend my man Bell Sprouts can do to really take this team to the next level? Um, the type overlap again uh, that we spoke of before. Um, I think you mentioned it. Making Wu Chi and Terra Captain. Uh, Tentacruel doesn't need Terra Captains. Um, the Terra Water on that that Apple, as you mentioned. Uh, Sableye could possibly drop out. Okie Dogie could possibly drop out and bring in, a, like a, I think, a physical attacker in this roster. You bring a physical attacker into that roster with um, Wu Chin as Terra Captain, and I think you are looking pretty damn nice. As you, as we said before, the potential is is phenomenal. Yeah, so I think with a couple of small changes, there's, there's just way too much type overlap on this team. And assuming we go with the fact that they're trying to do some type of hex spam. It's even overkill with that, my man. Like, you got Gliscor, Petrarot, and uh, Tentacruel, which is more than enough. You have Stun Spore with Wo Chien, which I think is pretty viable. Um, you have Stun Spore, uh, excuse me, you have Thunder Wave with Thunderous. I think Okie Doki and Sableye can go by the wayside. You have no Fairy or Steel. Yeah. At all. Yeah. Like, if, even yeah. if we want to count Appleton as that, it can't be both. So it's either one or the other. Um... There are some decent options out there in the document that will either be in the PBO chat or linked to this video. Yeah. I gave some suggestions about what you might want to look at. Uh, I think Iron Crown would be pretty decent on this team. Not super ideal because we already have a ghost weakness, but Wo Chien is a pretty good ghost answer. Um, 
Volcarona is one of my favorite Pokemon, but it doesn't usually perform that well in draft in my experience. And because you have so much type overlap on this team, I think you'd be better off getting rid of it and just getting like any good steel or fairy type just because you need it. And then I cannot stress this enough, as Dozo said, change the Terra to Wochien. You will never want to change Tentacruel's Terra type. I'm telling you, it will never happen. Um, Wochien, you will always want to change it. Because they're already trying to U-turn on you all the time. So punish them for it. Turn Terra Poison, turn Terra Fairy. Wochien Terra Fairy is a real thing. Wochien Terra Poison is a real thing. It makes this dude really, really good. And that with Petrant will be super annoying to deal with. Um, other than those couple of changes, you're really close to being really good. Nine, I know it seems low, but you, this, with some changes, I could honestly see this win. Because it's scary to play against. I would not want to play this. Um, I'm just, just looking at the dock myself now. Um, there's been a few teams we've known, we've, we've said about, could do with, um, magic with a, with a good fairy in Hatterene is free, but I'm looking at this team. I think on this roster, as much as it would be another water type, which is again, lapping up, um, I'm looking at Azumarill could be a really huge physical pain menace for this team. Could you imagine that I'm imagining the spikes, the rocks damage, the possible toxics racking up with Azumarill coming in with Choice Band Aqua Jets and just picking up kills. Yeah, with this team, um, that could... structured, even the water overlap, I wouldn't view it as a problem because, like, into a team no, with, with right. Thunderous and Gliscor, both of which I wouldn't drop, Electric, and again, we guys, when we talk about Electric weaknesses, something to keep in mind just as an educational thing, in Paldea decks, there are not that many good Electric types, and this team has one. So the electric weakness isn't great to have, but it's never going to be Stab Thunderbolt the majority of the time. Because we have Zapdos, Regilecki, Thunders. Yeah. There's just not that many. So it's not that you right, want to have you didn't that get weakness. Picked. It's not that you want to have that weakness, but it's not an absolutely devastating weakness to have, in my opinion. Yeah, yeah. That's fair, that's fair. That's fair. So, um, okay, well, that's... that's um... Pretty yeah, I think that this team this team can be pretty pretty yeah. damn happy. Yeah, this is one of the more interesting ones to me. But with that said, let's move on. See what we got next. We have yeah. the Orlando Magic Harps. Uh, we got rain, Doza. What do you think about rain? Oh, look, weather's not my specialty. Um, but like you, when you're looking at the roster, I think you mentioned it uh, when. Off, off screen, if he's if he was this pick, I would have he, he probably should have just picked Iron uh, Treads, and this team would have been in a, a whole lot different position. Um, with, when it comes to removal and that sort of stuff, because they hit him on top. Um, but when you got Zapdos there with, with its defensive utility, but the ability of it and it's sort of essential in some some games to run um, offensive. It's outstanding. Um, there's a reason Arch Aladon is banned. It's it, it and rain is absolutely insane. Um, I do have my fears that this team doesn't like like its defensive walls in um, Weezing and Amoongus uh, are weak to Psychic. Uh, weak, being weak to the same thing just scares me a little bit. Um, I would love to have seen Terra flying Jolteon because I think Ice is essential and Electric's obviously mandatory. Um, I think if but if it had like something to break Steel types like a Ground or a, or a Fighting, it would have been really cool. Even a Ghost would have been handy there. No, that doesn't break Fighting types, but it just would have been nice. Um, Barrascooter, really, really strong mon. Um, with it, you're just going to slap a Choice Band on it every week. That's pretty much all it's going to do, isn't it? Um, yeah, when it comes to rain teams, definitely not the best rain team I've ever seen. Um, considering, I think most most rain teams you look at, right, that Low kicks is a is an overquill or a um or a and coolfish. Um, I'm not yeah I, I can't I can't really talk too much more on it because I'm again I'm not a huge rain team guy but um we've got down there a bit of improvements for gastrodon could be a thing um but yeah I'll let you just run away with this one it's it's more of your thing. Okay, so uh, for some background information, I have. Essentially this same outline of a team. And I feel kind of presumptuous saying they should pick up most of the same things I have. But it there are some random things here. So low kicks. And I like low kicks as a, in a vacuum very much. 
But if we're just going to go for a random ghost resist, I feel like let's just go for a defensive Pokemon then because the offensive capabilities that Low Kicks brings almost uh, makes it incapable of also being a ghost check just because it's a little bug. Like it's not going to be much of a check in my opinion. The, the priority is nice, but I think one of the downsides of running the rain is that you don't have the ability to have just a random Low Kicks on your team. Because you're already starving for necessary typing. Um, Iron Boulder, I'm not a believer in Iron Boulder. Um, it never seems to do as much damage as you need. But maybe on this build, it, it'll be better at cleaning up. But I just think those points could be used more on something you need. Like we're running rain, but we have no ground type at all. And we have two resists in Amoongus and Archaladon, which are... Uh, quite decent in terms of that, although Archaladon has very minimal f special bulk if we're not running the AV set. And while that is a really good set, I think Substitute is probably better. Uh, Amoongus, obviously, uh, a, a pretty decent electric check, but I just feel like you really want a ground, t a ground type on a um, rain team, right? And I know we have Volt Absorb and the Jolteon, but then we're just one bad prediction away from just losing the game instantaneously, right? They, you yeah. think they're going to Thunderbolt, they Earth Power, or literally almost any other move. They knock off they any decent move. Jolteon dies, and now we're getting Thunderbolted out, you know, till the cows come home, right? Um, so, yeah, the Gastrodon and the Free Agent, I think, is is a possible pickup. Um, I don't know other than I get wanting to have Terra Jolteon because it is quite good, but I just think Terra Floatzel is sitting right there, and I think it might be the main reason to even run this team, and it's so much better than Barrascuta because Barrascuta can't Terra. Like, I can't emphasize this enough. Unless you're really trying to worry about, okay, Barrascuta is way faster outside the rain and gives me more utility then, but then if you're worried about that, don't even run the rain team because everything else on this team essentially requires the rain anyway. Floatzel, Terra Floatzel Wave Crash is the strongest move that we might even have available in the PBL. It's so strong. It one hit K. I know you have it on the team, but it one hit KOs Zapdos straight up. One hit KOs defensive Zapdos. Two hit KOs defensive Aloma Mola with Stealth Rock up. Like it's unbelievably powerful, and you should really have it on this team. Um, I know you just put the points on Hitmontop because you had them, but I don't think Hitmontop benefits at all from Terra. So maybe if we can turn the Low Kicks and the Barrascuta into Floatzel and something else. I know we'd have to change a lot of the team. But uh, past those those just recommendations, going as is, I don't think we can put this more as in the middle. Because the offensive capabilities of this just with our Chaladon is crazy. And also this is one of the players I've seen play. This player is very, very good in my opinion. So they might make it good this build, but on the face of it, I think there's just too much suboptimal things here to put this any higher than just mid tier. Like this could make the playoffs, yeah. but if it's not piloted well, this team could end up like two and six. I could see that very easily. It's actually funny you say that. Um, rain teams, I think, usually are put together by people who use rain a lot and are just very talented uh, with rain. Um, one thing I did think myself when I initially looked at this, that Thwacky could have been quite nice on this roster, uh, just because of, uh, just because of, um, Iron Boulder and just to help with that, that ground weakness. Yeah. The grassy terrain definitely um, helps our channel done also quite a bit and get, get the sub sub leftovers, grassy terrain, our channel done is a demon. It is very, very good. Um, I think that's all the time we have for rain, though. So, yeah, I agree. What we got Moving next. on. Okay, we got the Helsinki Jellicence. This is a very interesting team, Dozo. What do you think about the Jellicence? I think it's one of my favorite, personally. Uh, well, like, it's, it's not it's not the um, the best team in the world, but like it's got instant special power with Bundle. It's got instant physical power with um, Sneasla, which is absolutely insane. And then you run down a little bit slower speed tier, but uh, Primarina is has very fast become one of the most versatile, uh, bulky, offensive mons in the league. It's so damn good. Then you move down to his next three picks, and I just see two absolutely insane picks in uh, Skarmory and 
Crooked Eye. I don't know why, but a lot of people don't rate Skarmory as high at the moment um, as they have in the past. It's phenomenal. I've used it on ladder myself on a no-hazard removal team, and it was absolutely insane. Uh, Crooked Eye does its moxie sweeps if you don't if you let it with bulk. Up, it's got bulk up there with scale shot now as well. Um, it's also got home cords if you don't want to miss scale shots or whatever. Uh, I like Terra Snorlax. I think that's absolutely massive there. Um, I don't really like the Terra's on it. I think Electric, I understand, but I th probably would have preferred like a Ghost or a Poison or something. I don't know. I don't know. Terra Fairy is never bad. It's, I think it's the most overused. I think it's the most used fit, uh, Terra type anyway. Uh, Uxie, I personally found when I ran Uxie, I, as much as I loved it, I would love to have more to have been my Terra Captain. Serena's ever solid. Huge on um, Chandelor, big, big Chandelor fan that that massive 145 special attack is just phenomenal. And um, Galele is sort of just a fake mon. Um, I feel like it's there because this guy Galele's must play a bit of. Um, Galele's not real. I think Galele, I, I think I think he plays a fair bit of Ranbats, and Galele's just there, and it's made to be good by its level and its spreads. Yeah, Moody is banned. Um, Moody is banned. And Moody, Moody is banned. So yeah, um, speed gap issues, which you, I'll let you run into. Um, low priority options because he's only got like fake out. Aqua Jet, I think, on Primarina and maybe on Bundle. I don't think Bundle gets it, but it might get Aqua Jet. Other than that, there's no priority there. Um, I think it could definitely use the, any any of the terrain setters uh, would make Sneeze a next level threat as well. But um, yeah, what do you got for it? Okay, so tremendous immediate power and speed. Like, right, we got Sneezler, Iron Bundle. You just if you just ran specs bundle choice band sneezler every week you'd do something, right? So those are my kind of mods that are just if you ran the most basic set they can still do a lot of damage. Primarina I think is undercover maybe the best fairy except for Valiant. Like this thing is crazy. Um, I think we we moved it all the way up to one thirty or one forty. It probably could go to one fifty and still be really really good. This thing with specs is crazy. This thing with AV is crazy. This thing defensive with setup draining kiss is crazy. This thing AV but with special attack, like no spadef investment, is great. Flip turn puts this thing over the top. I cannot emphasize how good Primarina is. And it can come almost every week and do something really important or good. Um... I agree Skarmory is pretty good. If Skarmory just had U-Turn, it'd be so much better. Like, I feel like that's the only reason why... Defog, obviously, too, but that's the only reason Corvette is considered a higher tier than it is because it just can't switch out, get stuck in there. Um, Crocodile, always solid. Good to have a Ghost Resist. Stab Knockoff. Knockoff is such a valuable move in draft, and then when it can become an offensive threat more than just utility. When you take items off things in draft, ladies and gentlemen, it sometimes... The whole strategy of a Pokemon revolves around them having the item. So you take some boots off, you take uh, a choice band off, you take all this stuff off, you just neutral it. You take Keldeo's uh, specs off, for instance, just as something that I dealt with last season. It's the same as killing it, almost. Some things just need their items, right? Snorlax is an OG favorite of mine. You know, I used this in, when I was eight years old. Um, if you do change it to Terror Ghost, like Doso said, just because I did this... If you curse while you're Terror Ghost, you're a ghost. It doesn't give you attack and defense. It does the curse thing. Um, <laughs> oh, I've seen that happen multiple yeah, times. Don't, don't be the guy that that happens to because that happened to me. And it was fun. It was funny for everybody but me. Uxi cannot Terra, unfortunately, which does make it less valuable. I agree with Dozo in my opinion. I do think it's kind of just here. This is one of the ones that I may change. It's not bad at all, but mono typing defensive psychics generally don't do a lot in singles um doubles great chrysalia but singles without setup probably not going to end up doing what you want it to do um serena classic glue mon very good spinner with surprising attack 120 attack i think with big strong moves triple axle and uh power whip you turn out uh, might have sucker punch might not. I don't remember. I don't think it does, but it seems like it would, but I don't think it does. Chandelure, no, I think it one of those guys, which... Give Shand does Chandelure have Trailblaze now? Did I imagine that? I think you imagined it. Okay, it'd be so much better if it had Trailblaze. Um, it would be so much better, because you yeah. could run Modest very, very easily. Into, uh, 
Chandelure, I'm That's flame like, charge. Yeah, like like do a oh, flame charge. Okay, there you go. Like uh, Dozo, I'm a big fan of Chandelure. I think on this team, it might be better off being something else, but it's not because I don't like Chandelure. I just think it it seems yeah. random on this team. The Glalie and the Uxi and the Chandelure seem random when there's no dragon on the team at all. Like we're just missing certain types. Um, and we're adding in, again, Mono Psychic, which just typing-wise provides nothing, right? I know what Uxie can do with the screens, Yawn, Thunder Wave. Like, it can do things, but typing-wise, it just is a nothing. Um, and when we're missing, like, a standard type, um, it's hard for me to justify Uxie and um, Chandelure here. I think when I was, this was the team I was looking at because, again, there's a huge speed gap. This also can't be emphasized enough. Huge speed drop from Sneasler to, I want to say, Crookedile, which Crook is like mid-90s, I think. Then Sneasler is 120. So that, again, is a massive drop. I thought Salamance might slot nicely on this team, which is a free agent, base 100 speed, which fixes some of those problems. Then also gives us another setup mon. Because, again, without the terrain, Sneasler setup isn't quite as good, in my opinion. And Snorlax is good setup, but that's almost a win con more than a sweeper that they can't kill it rather than it's going to outspeed you and win. So I, I was looking at Salamance here for this team. But other than that, I like the potential of this team, but the walls give me, because their momentum drops... In the if you want to use the Snorlax as the Spadef wall and the Skarmory as the physical wall, we kind of have momentum drops there. And then the Uxie, if we keep it again, I, I feel like it'll end up not doing much without being able to change its type because it doesn't have reliable recovery outside Pain Split now, I guess it gets. So while I love the top three mons, I feel like the rest of the team is a little awkward, although I like the guys. I don't see the synergy here as much, in my opinion. Um, I definitely actually agree with you. The more we, I think about the Salamance thing you, you picked up, um, the fact that it has the exact same ability, abilities in um, Moxie Intimidate uh, really opens up Crookedoles, um and Salamance a little bit more. One of them, you know, they can play off each other or they can run the double Intimidate, maybe enforcing um, maybe enforcing some clear amulets and um, Covert Cloak is definitely going to be a mon uh, an item that's going to be forced on this team. Uh, when you, when they play this team with um, Dire Claw and everything being uh, accessible, um, and and you those few few things you mentioned about um, Chandelure could be something else. I agree, Holly and Soli. And every time I actually draft teams myself, I would love to pick up Chandelure. And nine times out of ten, it just doesn't fit um, for the price that it is for what I need. Um, generally in those holes, um, but yeah. That's that's about it. What do you uh, you want to move on? I think I've this is another one I've stuffed up and I haven't put the grade on. Oh, that's okay. Um, but it is what it is. Helsinki, I believe, is twelve. Helsinki, I believe, yeah. is twelve. Yeah. Um, I must yeah. have missed a few when we put it in. I'm sorry. We yeah, we, we have been on. Uh, no, it's fine. It's fine. The guys, the the actual rankings will definitely at least be in the PBO chat. Like you'll be you'll be tagged in it and probably added to this video when it's posted if it's not instantaneously when it's on there. But yeah, Helsinki and twelve. Also, don't don't um don't like this. You could be fourteenth and literally become first. Like it, it doesn't matter how one little bit. Um, Philadelphia Flygons last season, the guys had them ranked really really low and they um. They were a, a DQ off probably winning the league. Yeah, got, um, yeah, so with the rankings, guys, one. I don't know most of these players at all, so I it has nothing to do with you. It's just what I see on the screen. Also, like Dozo said, yeah. I've been ranked in a lot of leagues, like bottom, like four, and I won the league. Like it's it, it it's just until we see the vision. If you have a vision that me and Dozo don't understand, hey, do it. Prove us wrong. It's funnier that way. We don't care. Um, I would love to see. I would love to see uh, your draft recaps if you have. If you're going to do them on YouTube, I'd love love to hear yeah. other, everyone's point of views. Yep. And even um, because that recap, that that obviously opens yeah. up. Even if the draft recap is, I just like these guys and I don't care. I respect that. I'm all about that. Yeah. Um, okay. Yeah. Got, get in there and get in there and get it done. We got Nev Nevada. Okay, let's Cater move on. Yep. We got Nevada Caterpies. Uh, we got him ranked 11. Uh, I like his logo, but what do we think about the team? Look, 
if this is the same guy which I, that I, I've played with in draft league before um, off Facebook, and he, and he uh, I believe he's part of PTG, um, which is a Pokemon trading group on Facebook, so, you know, a little uh, sly, I guess, uh, boost for them. Um, if Andy, if this is Andy, if he wants to win this league, he will win this league. He's, he's, I've, I've watched him dominate an Ubers league one time with a Reggie deal, and it was just stupid every week. He got, he got multiple sweeps for the Reggie steal. Um, but speed is a bit of an issue in this team. Like I know we see a, a Greninja, a little bit instant power. Um, but I, I really like Great Tusk. I'm a big fan of Greninja. Obviously, used it last season myself. Huge Jirachi guy, huge Sylveon guy. Um, power in uh, the you know the, the Star Raptor is going to be pretty much every week choice band or choice scarf. And at the end of the day, that's how you run Star Raptor. I think you know that's pretty much how it's. It, it can run some other random stuff. It's got webs, um, which makes you know things like Jirachi and Flygon better. I like I like his I like his Terra Captains. Um, but yeah, other than that, uh, I'll let you tear it apart. Uh, so the this team is very solid to me. This is another balanced ish team, right? But when I look at it, I feel like again we're talking about lacking some immediate power outside of us. Volcanion is very strong and has strong moves, right? Tusk, if you want to run offensive, is strong and has strong moves. Uh, but if you're not, if you're running booster attack, that means you're not running booster speed. If you're running choice band, that means you're slow. If you're running choice scarf, that means you're not hitting as hard. And if you're running setup, then you obviously have to set up, right? So Tusk is amazing, but um, it. Its versatility is great, but again, a lot of it requires it doing a very specific thing in that match, right? And then when we talk about, I've never actually seen Star Raptor in draft. This is the first time I've ever seen it drafted, and I've thought about taking um, it a couple of times myself. But it's kind of like what we talked about with Chandelure earlier, and sometimes with one of my favorite Iron Hands is that they they bring so little type synergy that it's hard to fit them on the team. So I, I can tell you right now, go and watch after this match. After we finish this, get off the get off, jump on YouTube and go and watch um, last season's um, who who had it who had it Gator returning to um, what was the league that MV uh, not MV um, that Pokemon runs. Oh, the Shuckle one? Uh, yeah, the Shuckle Premier League. Yeah. Um, go watch his rerun. He had Star Raptor, Gator, and he's returned to draft. It's just the most stupid. You just lead it and you brave bird everything to death. Yeah. That's what I'm saying. It's in so theory, damn good. It's one of these things, like I said, with Iron Hands, with Chandelure. In theory, it should be good. But so say with this team... Um, It's not missing anything in particular. It's not – there's nothing not on it other than the speed issue. So with me, what do we have? Greninja at uh, – it's like 121, I think. Is yeah, roughly one, one, 122, I think it might be or something yeah, like that. Something like that. I think it's one faster than Tornadus, which was pissing me off in a matchup I had. So it's like – it's either 121 yeah. or 122, something like that, right? It's 122 because Tornadus is 121. I've got I'm a, I'm a big Tornadus guy. Okay, so um, uh, and then great. everything else here is base 100. You have base 100 Dorachi, base 100 Star Raptor, base 100 Flygon. Um, so that's a huge gap. And guys, so why that matters if we haven't talked about this yet? We've said that quite a few times. What that does is it lets the other team run attack boosting natures on their offensive threats. So if they have something, let's I don't know exactly what the numbers are, but let's say 115 speed. Instead of me having to run speed boosting nature, because your max speed is 328, I can run attack boosting nature and still outspeed you. That's a big deal in damage calculations and it adds up over time. Also what it does is it lets things run scarf but run bulky scarf. So instead of me needing to go plus speed – uh, choice scarf i can go plus attack choice scarf with like 120 hp 40 defense and like 20 speed and still outspeed your flygon before the boost 
or still outspeed your great tusk if it's not booster speed, right? That's what the issue is, and it creates very weird sets that you can't plan for because very rarely in my life have I ever gone and planned for bulky scarf, something that's bulk and scarf. But that becomes a real viable good option against this team that has this massive speed gap, right? And yeah, we have good choice scarf users in uh, Jirachi and uh, Star Raptor here. But we don't want to be locked into a set. Like if we take away Jirachi's versatility, it's way worse, right? So if we're just locked into choice scarf iron head spam, it's not that it's bad. But we've taken away Jirachi's biggest tool, right? So I think what I would want to see on this team is uh, I think this is the one I put a mid-ground offensive type. I thought Raikou was out there, and you might have to change some stuff like because you have electric overlap, although that's not a terrible type to overlap because this team, I think, would also struggle with water types, bulky water types outside of the Vikavolt would kind of wall quite a bit of this team. So it might give somebody to threaten it and then also keep switching in offensive Tusk or offensive Volcanion if they wanted and I see the vision here for Wish Pass to the Tusk and the Volcanion. And like I said, there's really nothing wrong with this team. Guys, something else I want to emphasize, most of the teams 12 and above, there's nothing wrong with them. Like, these teams are a lot closer than the numbers might seem. Like, 12 to 4, I don't think is that big of a gap as the numbers entail. So, there's very yeah. minimal keeping this team from being... Like, if this team is a playoff team, it won't surprise me one bit because there's a lot of good guys... I just think that speed thing is a huge detriment this team, and it needs a little bit more uh, offense, in my opinion. Some of these guys are a little bit too passive. Although setup flygon was a type top to kill leader in this team, uh, this league last year. So one change to this team, I think, it, I think it could be a top contender. Um, I think, uh, well, the, the which is part of the reason why we've just like we flapped some grades onto the slides instead of doing a power rankings video. I don't, I don't really like power rankings per se, other than um, a little bit of getting what we're getting from, from this. Uh, we're trying to give us a little bit of advice or even a little bit of uh, maybe open someone's eyes. I know when um, someone like yourself looks at a team that I've made and goes, hey, what if you did this, this, and this? Because you're weak to this, this, and this. And I go, okay, I didn't even recognize that. And then you're fixed, you know? So... Um, a lot of these things, people get a little, you, you, you know, when you're drafting, you don't notice uh, little things others do point out to you, and then all of a sudden you can fix that and your team becomes infinitely better. Um, but, yeah, let's move on with the Caterpies. Okay, let's see um, what we got next. I really like this drop. Okay. Hong Kong. The old Hong Kong Heatrans. Um, I just, it's got 10 good mons. Um, the synergy is pretty non-existent. Like, I like Thwacky, but at the same time, Thwacky's not doing anything in this team other than being a grass top with Grassy Glide. Um, it, 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 Earthquake obviously helps Iron Hands and, um, and Toxapex. Like, I, I, this team, with a good coach, will, will win, will, will absolutely slap us in the face. Um, you know, I'm hoping the Hong Kong Heatrand has got a coach that's next level because this team, in the hands of a, of a, of a solid uh, person who knows what they're doing, I think will be absolutely phenomenal. Oh, and I think I've got the Terra type wrong. I think Terra, I think that might be Terra Ground on Old Frame, but I could be wrong. It could be Terra Grass. I can't quite remember off the top of my head. Okay, so let's talk about. Uh, I've seen. Uh, I believe it's Geo play before. So I know he knows what he's doing. But, dude, this team is not good. Um, and I there's some stuff here I just don't understand. Like, for the power level of the league that we're in, it, one, it doesn't have type synergy, and the power level seems low. Uh, um, I really like Terrapagos. I, Iron Hands is my probably my second favorite Pokemon. Like, I love Iron Hands in a vacuum. Darkrai is super strong in a vacuum. I think Quagsire is underrated. Uh, unaware, I think if there was enough Unaware Mons in the game, it would be something people would expect you to have on every team. Because it's super useful to have and invalidates a lot of strategies, sets up a lot of hazards. Thwacky would be great as a Terra Captain. It's not here, which makes it infinitely worse. 
um, which is something we've said a lot and will continue to say on these videos. The only Steel and Fairy you have on this team are both Terra type captains that want a Terra out of their type. Um, I think Alcremie would be better as Steel or Water as the type instead of Grass, in my opinion. Yeah, I, I think... I think I've made an error there. I, I, I actually th do think that it might not be grass. Okay. Uh, ground, which you said would also, I understand that for hitting opposing steals, but this is usually the stored power set, which doesn't care about resistances anyway. So I think it's always running the same set of stored power, draining kiss, iron defense, uh, calm mind, or you drop the stored power for uh, recovery, one of those two. So I don't think the... Terra Glass Ground would ever be used anyway. Nightmare popularized this and made this uh, good last season in Unova Division. It's a good mod. It, yes. It's a good. It's a good low low budget Terra. Yeah, it my, is a good low budget my, Terra. It, the only the real issue I have with it is is again we're tearing out of our fairy and steel type right, and our fairy and steel yeah. type on the face of it are Earthworm and Alcremie, right? So. Yeah. I think Earthworm is a bad Terra type, bad Terra mon. I don't think it needs without Shed Tail. Don't, it, it, it's just not doing it. Yeah, Teams exactly. are bringing a special mon. We talk about Mew. We talk, me and Ben talked about this on the uh, Stargazer video. We don't know what Mew does on any team. Like we know, I I know it can do the body press, like defensive troll set, and it could be a sweeper. And I know it can do things, but I don't think it does anything well. And it's not a good wall anymore. We talked about how with Uxie that mono. Psychic typing is essentially a nothing in the type chart. It doesn't bring you really anything in terms of type synergy. So by having this as a top two pick, you almost doom yourself to having suboptimal typing just by just by the fact it's here, right? And yeah. same thing with Tornadus. Tornadus I, I think... is yeah, Tornadus is an amazing mon. But again, mono flying type is again kind of dooming your type synergy because it doesn't do anything for the most part. Yeah. Um but what I was looking at with this team, I'm not going to go through and, and remake the whole team because I definitely, from what I understand, Geo had a vision for this team and he wanted things that he didn't get. But if you just changed Dark Rye to Roaring Moon, which is available, it would at least give you some more type synergy and the same type of offensive presence, but with more switching, more setup capability, um, and all your... Your main other threat offensively, Tornadus, is special anyway. Um, Terrapagos is special. Um, Alcremi is special. I think you could use some more physical offense. That was my recommendation. But other than that, good luck with this, Geo, man, because this 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 is going to be tough. I'm not going to lie to you. Yeah, um, big, big agrees there, big agrees there. Let's move on. Let's move on okay. uh, to the Chimchars. Um, I quite like this team. I think it's a really, really solid defense core. It's um, Vale bat, bat and pass into backs GG. I, I've got that there in the positives. Um, and the ever versatile Cinderace. Um, I think he's got some really good fighting resist in um one of his Terra captains in Articuno and Sizzle. Uh, sorry, sorry, Cipher. Um. We both, I think, agreed uh, that Electrode would be a much better Terra Captain than Haunter. Um, I would, because it just, just is what it is. Um, I think a Rapid Spinner could be really, really nice in this team, as we did speak about. Because you don't want to be... The big thing is you've got a, probably three of the best rockers in the format um, in Ting Lu, Empoleon, and DoD. Um, and obviously, and maybe even two of the best Spikers in the format. Um, and they both of those would really, really appreciate um, a rapid spinner to come to come in. Um, would have been quite nice with this roster, but um, I think offensively, if you bring a good physical defense mon, um, you can probably break this team down because outside of backs and Cinderace, um, and a, you know it's going to rely on uh, Articuno setting up um, to do its damage. Uh, thoughts? Yeah. So. The Fairy Dragon Steel Core is good here. I think Empoleon's really good. I like Empoleon a lot. Okay, that's fine. Um, it, it punishes Defog for a team that really wants to set up hazards. Um, Baxcalibur is the best Pokemon in, in PBO. It has been. It's won three championships. Um, 
Absolutely crazy, man. Cinderace has. I think Rotom and Glow King. I think Rotom and Glow King are up there, aren't they? Yeah, they're they're close. They've, yeah, I just, they've uh, won some chips. Yeah. Um, yeah. Cinderace always can come every week. Always does something. Defensive is a is a viable set with boots and uh, Will O Wisp. It's pretty good. Um, we've seen bulk. You can run bulk uh, bulk up high jump kick. Really good set. Um, uh, people do weird, against Trailblaze. Yeah, people do all kinds of weird stuff. It can do all kinds of weird stuff. And then just the standard set is also good. Good choice scarfer. Good choice bander. Good boots. Um, all kinds of stuff. Right. I think Scyther yeah. is underrated. I think it's way bulkier. If you have something that can really keep rocks up, it's way bulkier than anybody thinks it is. And it can also be way stronger than anybody thinks it is. So it has the same general... Scyther and Scizor actually have the same base stat total, which is really weird. And if you don't yeah. know that, it kind of blows your mind. But Swords Dance uh, Scyther is still really strong. So, and, you know, it has stab U-turn, a lot of good utility here. Um, Ting Lu is always good. It's really, really annoying. It's It lives forever. It sets up hazards. Ruination is a really stupid move that's annoying when it hits because there's nothing you can do about it. Um, its Earthquake is way stronger than it should be. I'm glad this thing doesn't have knockoff because that would be crazy. Um... What I would change and work on, Electrode with Terra, I think is actually pretty good. And it's one of the better, I think it's only 20 points, maybe it's 30. It's one of the more high value Terras in the league. Because I think it gains the most from it of of almost anything. Because it's terrible without it. But with the Terra, you can yeah. turn it into budget Regilecki. Um, if you give it just Terra Electric, is decent. And then Terra Ice and Fairy are both quite good. And I think it does a lot for like 30 points. It gets a lot of value. Haunter, I could see the vision because like just Terra Ghost Choice Scarf would be a decent cleaner. But I think it's more of a reach in this league. I think the power level is too high for Terra Haunter. Um, with DOD, I'm not a DOD believer. I, like we've, we've said this three times on this video already. Defensive psychic types are not good in singles. The only reason Cresselia even is in doubles or has some success in singles is because its bulk is so immense that it's just almost over. It can't be overcome regardless. But with Cresselia, you're talking 120 HP and 120 defense and special defense. Like nuts. DOD. Well, Cresselia also has the move that has uh, healing with refresh now, too. Yes, yeah, yeah. So yeah, that but, makes. But that's, why, that's really the only exception to this. DOD's positives is it's the only thing that still has negative priority teleport, which is really good. We forget because that move is removed from everything. People think it's not in the game. It is still on Deoxys, right? Um, but I think it's a do-nothing mod most of the time. Uh, Mary dropped it last season uh, because we we all kind of realized like, it, it can do some stupid sweeping sets, but that's a gimmick. It's not consistent. You're not going to win a championship doing that, right? So I think those points, if you put it into a fast special attacker, like Dozo said, you're kind of walled by physical walls. DOD gives you 120 points to mess around with, and then uh, I don't think you need the Haunter. If you took the Haunter points and the DO speed points and you made that into one really good offensive mon, and then you just picked up a 10-point guy and put the Terra on Electrode, I think this team is way better and becomes almost like a title contending team. Because I like the defensive backbone of uh, Empoleon and uh, Ting Lu. I think that's more the defense. Plus, you know, Nine Tails in the Snow gets decently bulky physically. And Articuno is also not a bad typing. Psychic Flying is really not that bad of a typing for your team. Neither is Bug Flying for your team because you need the Fighting Resist. I don't think you need DoD for the Fighting Resist. And I think you could just get something that will do more things. And then one other thing, yeah. your team really wants to set hazards, but you have no spinner. If you can find a spinner also, that's what I would look for. Special offense and spin using the points that you could get from dropping DOD and Haunter. And this team, but this this team is a playoff team for sure, in my opinion. I think when we, so if we go back to uh, exactly what you were just saying there, I really do like uh, Gengar, um, the more I look at this roster. Um, 
because it's there, it's free, it's a big special attack. I give him a really powerful ghost, gives him a nice speed tier. Um, one thing I did overlook, and I'm just looking at, and the more and more I look at it now, nasty plot um, on Nine Tails is really, really, really nice because end of the day, this team has two absolutely phenomenal answers to poison and steel. Um, steel moves in Ting Lu and uh, Empoleon. So I think you know, I'm underestimated uh, Nine Tails a little bit there in my pre entry there. But I, I, I do like uh, things like Gengar could be really, really solid, like just a good choice pack user on this team. Um, but yeah, that's that's my. I don't Chim have anything else coach, for this. And then also people who play Chimchars, Specs Nine Tails is real. It's it's good. It's not what you would normally yes. see because we think it's Aurora Vale bot. It's got real speed. Yeah, but it's Blizzard. Moon, yeah, Moonblast, like, freeze-dry is a great combo. Uh, Blizzard is the most broken move in the game. Yeah. When it, with, with Stab, Blitz, Stab, Stab, I'm 100% high chance to freeze. Thank you very much. I'll take that. Yeah, back in Gen 1, back in my day, Blizzard was 90 accuracy. We just spammed that shit all day. Okay, here we go. Yes. Let's see what we got next. Okay, this, Lord is, your, this is your man, right? What do we think about the army? Yeah, it's my boy Jace. Uh, look, I'm a, I'm a little bit biased on this team. I, I do agree with you in the sense that it's uh, maybe a little bit. When you're looking at the like the balanced teams, I, I'm comparing this team to um, the Garchon team, which is owned by Tokyo. Tokyo. Now, yeah. this is just a little bit like, the, the, like it's it's a little bit um, worse Tokyo team. When you when you talk about instant power, like it, it relies on choice specs, laddie, most weeks. Um, but when you're looking at Ogapon with grass and water stab with U-turn pivoting, I'm a really big fan of Annihilate. The fact that it can be mixed uh, with Nazi plot or Swords Dance and run Vacuum Wave or Mac Punch um, for, for for fighting stabs with um, good overheats, Fire Blast uh, or Flare Blitzes for, for fire or uh, flame Fire Punch boosting. Unaware is just absolutely annoying. Uh, Laddie being a huge value pick. Killer Watcher would have been way better as a terror captain. Uh, we we spoke about that off screen. Um, when I was helping, talking to Jace about this team, I actually had Gavantula there, but he went with Killer Watcher purely because it's a bit more of a safety net for him. Um, Ori Corio sort of come up as a, he wanted to, we needed him a ghost. Um, and it's a good little late, like a little cheap sweeper that if you don't prep for and he can get in, could be nice. I think he's got some really, really strong wish users there with. Um, Glaceon, Umbreon, and of course Clefable, which makes Fortress a lot harder to deal with. Um, Toad Scroll there being a Terror Captain. Um, I think it helps Toad Scroll with a few of its weaknesses um, that it, it does have, and a little bit of a damage uh, output issue when it comes to um, just its, 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 its overall stats. I like Grafire as a Terror Captain um, as much as it probably would be better to use on something else. Um, Grafire does have, you know, that defensive pivoty prankstery sort of junk it can do, or it can be a good defensive uh, with, uh, you know, Encore and that sort of stuff, but also can go offensive with the Unburdened sets, yep. which go pretty crazy with um, with, with some things. But, um, yeah, look, you mentioned it earlier about um, consolidating some picks uh, like – and maybe Oricario and Fortress and bringing in Metagross could be a very, very solid thing, which will allow you to upgrade something else, um, you know, or or possibly bringing Webs into the team with Killer Watch all. But personally, I like the team. It's a team that I would draft um, between this, you know, for me, use it for me personally to walk in and pick any three teams in the draft that I would personally use. It's this one, it's Tokyo's, and it's um, the team we have and the Sword Loons. Um, so yeah, I, I like this team. I, I'm a big fan of Laddie. I think I think he's forcing teams to run a lot of covert cloaks. Um, is it covert cloak? Yeah, to stop luster purge. Um, but I, I like. I think he's got really good spin. Where he's got slow spin, he's got fast spin. Um, he's got a defog option there that he, you know, Ori Corio, Let's face it, maybe comes once or twice in a season. Um, I think low key special power down there in Umbria and uh, it. Sorry, Glaceon is absolutely phenomenal. Um, yeah, I, I think he's got, I think he's got some tools. Um, yeah. It's just got to be used well. But I know, I know, I know this guy personally. Um, and if he, he's a little bit like me. Actually, his, his consistency sometimes can drop off. Um, 
obviously I you know had a pretty consistent season last season, but if he puts his mind to it, he's um absolutely incredibly hard to break apart. But as you will point out in a second, um instant power, one more instant power would have been uh, really, really nice for this yeah, team. I, I think what this team is hurt by, and it's something totally out of the coach's control, we made the Ogre Ponds way too many points. And Ogre Pond should really be like 150 and it's 180. So if this team had 30 more points to work with and you changed one, and not that I don't like these guys, but you changed one of the mid, one of like the 150 ones, like if Infernape was Blaziken, just on name, I would just be more yeah. afraid to play this team, right? And I think that hurts it because I think Ogre Pond Water is great, but it's too many points on our dock because Don just hates it. Sorry to throw the shade at Don, but he knows that it's true. Um, and it not having access to those 30 points, I think, uh, caps the power level of this team. So I, I see this team is very, very solid. Again, there's nothing wrong with it. And like if like if I played with this team, I think I could do really, really well with it. But sometimes I think I would come up against somebody who is of the same skill level as me that just had better guys. That's what I view as becoming yeah. the, the long-term uh, – and again, I, I'm not even taking into account the other teams in the league. I'm just judging these on a vacuum in and of themselves. And what I like is I like Umbreon. I think it's very good and it's easy for newer or not super experienced players who haven't seen this thing all the time to easily get swept by Umbreon. Like if you want to bring a sweeping set or it gets to the end of the game and you just can't break this thing and it toxics you and foul plays you, right? The fact Umbreon still has toxic randomly for no reason whatsoever is so valuable yeah. when they brought it back, right? It was it wasn't called for, was it? It wasn't called for it to keep toxic. No, it makes no sense. Why? Same thing with Mandy like, Buzz. I don't know why that has it. I guess is there dark types? Best thing I could come up with. Yeah, uh, yeah, um, maybe. One of my, um, what, you know, one, think, of my um, one of my issues is that uh, me and Ben talked about this on the other video, and I agree with him as somebody who's used Fortress a lot. You don't realize how many guys have Fire Punch until you have Fortress on yeah. your team, and then you go yes, and you're Burning like, Jealousy as well. Yeah, and Mystic like, Fire. Why, is, why does this thing have random Fire Punch, and you just hope that they're dumb and they don't know that the thing has Fire Punch? Um, Fortress on ladder is way. This is just one of the things that suffers a lot from draft. A ladder, I love Fortress, so good. It's just there's so many things that can two hit KO it that shouldn't have no business. That would never run fire punch in in a real game, but do in draft. And I think just relying and I, I, relying on it as a spinner, I think is fine. But relying on it as the main steel type without the Terra. I think could cause a problem in say like two to three games in the season. Um, yeah, and that's where that's where like you you did mention uh, in the pre drafting that uh, Metagross could really really be nice for this roster like as much as yeah. he's already got Laddie. Yeah, I like budget uh, Glace, Glaceon. I actually really like Oracorio Terra. I was using it in some mock games, and it was actually cooking. To be honest with you, like yeah, well, it, Oricorio is banned Terra. No, no, you could Terra the Oricorio. We really? It. Yeah, Are we you sure? It. Yeah, we changed it. Oh well, Jason, you better you better get your ass in gear and get that Oricorio into Terra mode if you're going to do that. Yeah, I think it would be. I also like the Graphite. I would like again. This would be something with the if there was just random Thwacky or Rillaboom here. I think it'd be a really strong Terra Captain. But yeah, if you want to switch it to the Oracorio, you might get more value out of it because that's something you really have to prep for in the team builder and would make this team uh, a lot scarier. Um, yeah, because your your setup here, like Infernape, can set up, but I don't know. Like in 2024, how viable? I mean, I'm sure it can do something sometimes, but say that Clef can set up, but it's more of like that Snorlax thing we talked about earlier, and that it's more you can't kill it than that it just runs you over. And Ogre Pond is insta win yeah. setup always, right? So maybe having that uh, Oracorio defensive quiver dance thing would actually be pretty good for this team now that I'm looking at it. But um, this is one of these teams that, guys, I, I, I may or may not have said this. I can't remember if I said it off camera or on. A lot of these teams could win. Like, I wouldn't be surprised if this team goes really yeah. well, but I'm not taking into account the players at all. So this is, like, slightly worse balance than the other balanced teams, in my opinion. 
so I have to put it here. But say if you put this above Rain, no real problem with it. But me as an offensive player, I just want to see a little bit more. As much as I love Specs Latios, I do think, as Dozo said, this is this is a great value pick. It's way better in draft than ladder. Latios has a lot of value. Uh, me and Ben talked about this in the in the Stargazer video. Um, I just think it's hurt by Ogre Pond being too many points and not enough like in the team builder when we see this team, we're not going, oh man, I got to deal with X. It's, okay, I got to make sure I don't get toxic by Umbreon. It's a, it's a long game. I know I'm playing a long game against this team. I'm not like afraid. There's no shack on this team. It's just going to dunk on me. Like I'm just not really afraid, if that makes sense. But um, yeah, like, like I, I definitely understand what you're saying when there's no like, no shack, which makes a lot of sense now you say it. Um, which ironically has been my personal problem in the past, and it's probably why I've just missed the edge of um getting a getting a chip in the past, or more, more chips in the past. Um, I think but I think, like I think has, uh, yeah, I think with teams like this, it's just an educational thing because this is more of a the mid division. G- guys, yeah. when you come up against people that are of equal skill level to you, which at some point is going to happen. Like if you if, maybe in this division we mistakenly put you in this division, and you're amazing, right? You'll get up to the higher level and you'll end up playing people that are of roughly the same skill level as you. If they just yeah. have better guys. Sometimes building top heavy, like I build top heavy teams in general. If I have two better guys than anybody you have, I'm probably going to beat you most times if we're the same skill level. So, um, yeah, that's right. That's just something to keep in mind. If you're a balanced player and you're really good at it, play balance. But it is difficult. If you have this team and you play Bax Caliber and Iron Valiant on the same team, it's hard to beat it. It's hard to beat it because they're just, they have more talent and it's tough to overcome it. But, um, yeah, I think I think with Jace, Jace is in in a, in a really good position where he can um, just like there's a few of these teams that we've gone over that maybe even a touch higher than this that actually um, require a lot of trades. Where I think Jason's is one or two trades off a, a, a Terra trade here and there, and he's good to go. Yeah, yeah, and um, and I don't yeah. di- I don't it's, dislike this team at all. Like I said, I don't want to come off like I dislike it. No, 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 no. no. Um, it it has potential. I, I like I said, I, I think Killer would be better Terra captain. And maybe a combination, or definitely, if nothing else, I think just change the Terra from Grafai to or Corio. I think it makes the team way better. Okay, but that being said, yep. let's see what we got next. Okay, this is a weird one, but powerful. CRQ Snorlax. Yeah, it's uh, it's it's a weird one for me. I, I, I do. I, I'm a big fan of Samurai. I, I think Samurai in the right team, which I don't. Know if this is the right team, but at the same time, those first two picks actually make it really, really strong. Don fans never bad. Kasui and Gudra is absolutely ridiculous to pull down, and that but paired with, I think, one of the best mons in draft. It's definitely the best mon at the moment in OU, um, in Sloking Gala. Um, uh, absolutely phenomenal. I really like Terra uh, Whimsicott, like just choice specs, uh, Terra Fairy Whimsicott. It's really, really hard to switch into. Um, Terra Ground's really nice, handles steel, Terra Fires handles steel, so it handles steels on both sides of the fence. Um, yeah, I just, I think the bottom the bottom five of this draft actually let this team down. Not saying they're bad, like a lot, like Talonflame's great in its own right. Tauros is outstanding. Rotom uh, Frost with Terra is a lot better, I, um, but, and Murkrow can, can do a thing. I just... Just I think that top six just needs a little bit of like help with uh, maybe a really good um, wish passer. I think the the Gudra is a fake ice resist in a lot of ways, um, as you mentioned. You, you you've actually quite mentioned. I think they got really solid removal. Like Don Fan can come every single week, just about. Um, and I really would love to honestly see Lantern over over Rotom Wash as much uh, Rotom Frost as much as I've got um, solid Terra captains there as the positives. Um, I'll let you um, I'll let you run away with it. I think you, you're a big fan of Spectre. You actually think Spectre is the best mon in this format? Yeah, I mean, I'll, I'll go on my my short Spectre explanation. So, um, I'm an Uber's player at heart, and like my last really high run up near or two number one, I can't remember if I actually got there is was with Calyrex Shadow, 
And the, you play this mod essentially the same way, that the team isn't trying to win. It's trying to get everything into range to, to be beaten by Spectreer. So if you're down 6-1 with Spectreer, but everything's chipped, you win the game, right? That's the way you're trying to play the game. So I have to judge the team based on can this do that, and I think it's close. So there's actually a lot of overlap, not a lot, but a, 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 a decent amount of overlap between this and the Spectreer team and Stargazer. They both have Talonflame, they both have uh, Hasuian Samurott, and they both have Spectreer, right? So... I think this team is built around the fact that it has, at worst, the second best offensive Pokemon in the format, and almost unequivocally the best defensive Pokemon in the format. So just based on the strength of those two guys is really why this team is up this high, because Slowking Galar is so good, guys. Like, if you think anything, like, this, this, if somebody picked this first, I wouldn't even think it was that weird. That's how good this thing is. Yep. I took it first last season. Yeah, honestly, like, I mean first overall. Like, I'm not saying I would yeah, do it, was... but it, I wouldn't think it was, like, that, you know what, crazy, right? The problem I see with this team is I think it's relying a little bit, well, I know it's relying a lot on pure bulk rather than typing. And again, when you yeah. have something like pure ghost typing is great offensively, but it doesn't really... It's not any type of standard defensive synergy. Like, yes, it resists. I mean, it's immune to fighting. But again, it provides you no super important resistances. Like, yes, it, re it resists, you know, U-turn, right? But, like, nothing meaningful, right? And um, so the whole team being built around that as the main guy. And then we have defensive non-synergy between that and Glow King, the two best, right? Because they're both weak to Shadow Ball. They're both weak to Dark. The thing about Glow King is that if they don't have a strong uh, special attacking Ghost or Dark type, this thing walls special attacks in enti its entirety. Like, it just walls them totally. Because also, there's not a lot of strong special ground moves. Right? It's usually coverage, which isn't going to hurt you very much. So, the fact that that's not covered... That it doesn't cover Spectre's weaknesses is unfortunate. But Hasui and Samurai kind of comes in to fill that in. What I feel about this team is that, like you mentioned, the Steel Dragon type in standard play is really strong. In draft, as somebody who just drafted one of these and quickly found out, um, it means you don't have a real dragon or a real steel defensively. Because you yeah. don't have a fairy That was resist. what I felt. Yeah, you don't have a fairy resist. That's what I You don't have an ice resist. Like, you don't have either one. Yeah. And then... Um, but Hasui and Gudra is such a big special wall, which is I think is why they took this, that it might just overcome it. So you see, we mentioned, uh, I believe, off-screen, Iron Bundle runs through this team. If this is AV Gudra, it does not. It does not damage AV Gudra in any meaningful way. It's probably, yeah. If it's not specs, it's probably like a 4 or 5 hit KO, I'd guess. Without freezing it. We, oh, yes. I think it would be even more. Without freezing it. Yes. Would be... Um, um, so, in that respect, it's so bulky that it might not be an issue, and um, the spikes that the Hasuian Samurai is going to provide should, in theory, get things down for Spectre. Like, I think there's a clear plan here, but I agree. I'm not sure the support... I like all the switch moves also. Talonflame, defensive piece that switches. Tauros, defensive piece that switches. Um, does Whimsicott have Baton Pass? It probably does, right? I don't know if it has... I'm pretty sure it has U-turn. I don't know if Toros okay, yeah, has yeah. pivoting. Okay, so it has U-turn. So we got Switch there. We got Chili, obviously. We got Flip Turn. So we have good Switch moves to keep bringing in, say, a Specs... It's weird to say. Specs, Spectreer set. So I feel like this team might see a couple of changes, and I feel like it's going to take two weeks for this gentleman to figure... Excuse, I don't know if they're a gentleman. Yeah. They are. To figure out how to yeah. play this team... But I could see 1-1 one and one or 0-2 oh the first two weeks, then maybe a 6-0 run. Because when you figure out how to do this, as I mentioned, I'm a believer in talent. And I think that Spectre is better than everybody else, that every other Pokemon we have in the league. In terms of just pure power, it's better than everybody else. So if you have this guy on your team, and you're of the same skill level as everybody else, I believe you have an advantage every week. 
It just depends on if you can take advantage of that advantage, essentially. I wish yeah. there was a better fighting type on the team, and I wish there was a better fairy type on the team, although I've never seen Terra Fairy Whimsicott, but I trust you if you say it's good. Um, I wish we um, didn't have a better again, fighting go. type. But um, other than that, I think just on the basis of Spectre, this should be a top four-ish seed, in my opinion. Um. On with yeah uh, yeah I'm I'm there with you uh, with the Tauros like I think if he can sol- he, he could probably change a few things like with Rotom and 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 the the Honch the bird and Tauros I think you could get a, a nice fast fighting type into this roster I think a fast fighting type with Spectre Air, that is cracked even a it's not fast but it's um like a Mac punching guts boosted Conkelda type thing could. Be okay. I think you mentioned Zapdos Galar earlier. Yeah, that's, um, that's something to look at, Snorlax. When you hear this, I, I Zapdos just, I, Galar is a free agent. It is a free agent. But saying that, but, but saying that, that Tauros, like the fact is, Tauros can can tear through teams. I would have like with Trailblaze. It, it makes it really really nice with Adamant Trailblaze close combat wave crash. It's really really strong. Um, yeah, yeah I, I, just, I like Aquatorus. Yeah, I agree. I, I think Aquatorus is good. Yeah, me too. I'm a huge, huge on Aquatorus. I mean, uh, big, I've, I've drafted it a couple of times now, and I loved it. Um, but yeah, I think you're right. I think you, you, you definitely hit the nail on the head. I could see this team being one and one. Um, and the fact is, it's walls hit. And this is one thing I, I've always been big on. As long as your walls can hit. And I won a chip last season with my walls hitting, and Slowking was my best mon. And with Rotom all season. Um, yeah, so, so Don Fan hits, yeah, Gudra guys, hits, guys, and Slow so King if, hits. If anybody watching this wasn't, Glow King won both championships last season. It's won both. three of the last four. Yes. Um, in, in two divisions. So okay, And I Rotom think, washes right there as well. I think that's good for, for Snorlax. Yep. Yeah. Let's move on. Yeah, we're getting... Oh, here we go. Uh... The Golden Go Champions. Dozo, what do you got to Good. say to the, the Golden Go Champions? Um, It's like, got some phenomenal Pokemon. Golden Go Kirim, absolutely insane pair. I'm a huge Ursula and a Blood Moon believer. Anyone who doesn't think Blood Moon is good is wrong. Um, King Gambit is the best late game sweeper. It's, it's, it's a... Almost, if you, if anyone watches any a lot of uh, high level OU players like Pink Across, for example, um, it's like a staple. King Gamma just goes on every team. Um, Clodsaur is amazing. Why is there a Reggie Gigas? Um, big fan of Zarud now that it has knockoff. Like I feel this team has two mascot picks in Zora and Reggie Gigas. Um, and also this guy. Why is Psychic Type one of your dittos? Terra types and and where is your other Terra captains, my guy? Um, I like the CGI, um, but yeah, he's basically loses to Scrappy, uh, Flamigo. That is just, true. That is true. Choice choice banded Scrappy Flamigo just wins. GG, thanks for coming. Okay, so I don't know if this is my man's first time in a draft league. Uh, you just, you can't have this many of the same weaknesses. It's just not, it's just not going to work. Um, and what we mean by that is I'm counting, I think I counted seven or eight. So right. So you have four in, uh, King Gamut, right? Cause that's four times week. Ursula and Blood Moon, Kyrim, Reggie Rock, Reggie Gigas, Zoro, and Zarud. So yeah, that's seven. That I just counted, right? So if something has Swords Dance, Earthquake, Close Combat, it just sweeps the entire team, right? I guess that's what Ditto is for. Um, but like like uh, Dozo said, a lot of these guys are really, really good. I love the pairing of Kyrim and... Uh, I'm a huge Kyrim believer. I think it's great. Kyrim and Golden Go. I think is an amazing pairing that you could build a really good team around. Gambit is never bad to have. People usually don't draft it in any league I see, but that doesn't mean it's not good. Um, and Blood Moon, similarly, it's it's a crazy Pokemon. I And I love Clodsire. 
I also like um, Decidueye. Everything else, I think you got to change for something else. I don't remember what I put in uh, the write up. You'll see it in the write up of what I said that we should that it should be changed to. But like for instance, there's no fairy on this team at all. Not even a Terra type fairy. Um, there's no water type on this team at all. Just at all. Yeah. So and these are like there's one thing that's just yeah, go ahead that's just popped into my head. Sorry, sorry to interrupt you. There's okay. one thing that has popped into my head that I actually think would really be quite nice on this team and fill a water type role is a Terra Obama Snow um, with, I think, King Gambit, um, the Ursa Luna, and the Kirin would all hugely, hugely benefit um, from from a, a Veil um, setter. Yep. And Terra Water is one of the most common Terra types on. A bomber snow. Um, I know that might be a bit, a little bit left field. I just, I just, I think this team could be nice with the bomber snow. I don't know if you agree with that. That's yeah, just a, I mean, off the, the off the top is, of my head. Just because I'm we, thinking about making Kirim as hard as possible, hard as possible to hit. Yeah, we have the points for it too because, like, Reggie Gigas, especially if it's not going to Terra. Like, I mean, listen, dude, if you do something with Reggie Gigas, it'll be legendary. But I don't think it's going to work. So uh, it, like, it, it'll work. It'll work one time. Yeah. Uh, it'll work one time, maybe. But if you're gonna go in the build, I don't remember. You can see in my write up whatever I said recommendations of what might work on this team. But at the very least, you need a water type, and you need a <clears throat> fairy type. Fairy. Definitely a water type. Maybe, maybe, maybe we could get away with no fairy. Uh, but no, actually, for this team, we need a fairy type because we have a million uh, fighting weaknesses, right? Uh, Reggie Rock, probably yep. you don't need it. Uh, Reggie, maybe he really likes Reggie. So l listen, if you like this team, roll with it. I'm just telling you, like, there's going to be some bad weeks if you match up with the wrong thing. Um, nobody has it, but Blaze again, real bad for this team. Um, all, but that's our that's our recommendations and review for the old uh, Golden Go. Yeah. Okay. Let's move on. Let's, yep. move on. Let's see what's next. Okay. Um, oh, I'm gonna. Let, I, I'm not really even gonna talk on this team apart from. I, I, I hope Apom is there because it's uh, mascot sort of pick. But other than that, I'm gonna let you talk on this team because I really like it. And once you told me about the the change that I didn't realize we made um, in the in the you know the off season. Um, but yeah, I'll let you go with it. Shoot it for us. Yeah, so this is one I, I'm not really going to say too much about this one either because I really like this team. It bucks a lot of traditional trends that we go with. So there's not really a bulky water because Keldeo doesn't want to take any hits, right? There's no dragon at all. Uh, but what we do have is an absolute, what will be an absolutely infuriating core of Mandibuzz and Skeledurge. I don't want to play against that. I'm telling you right now. Like, that's really annoying and really good. Uh, Lando T is incredible. Uh, I used this last season. That was on my championship team. And people, similar to Garchomp, which we mentioned a while ago, is people are so used to seeing this thing as a defensive Pokemon that they forget. This thing has 145 attack on Stab Earthquake, right, with Swords Dance. Just run Choice Band, run Choice Scarf. Leftovers, the defensive set is still good. Intimidate is a great ability. The, the, the typing is great. It can do all kinds of things. Gravity won me a playoff game. You Gravity and Earthquake. Amazing set, right? Meow Scarada, one of the best Pokemon in the format. Um, can actually do some special set, some uh, special sets, although it's normally going to be its normal physical. I like Choice Band because I'm that guy, but Choice Scarf Boots is really good. Life Orb isn't bad. Expert Belt can set hazards. You can do weird things with Protean to get uh, immunities. It's just good at switching. Keldeo, amazing breaker and revenge killer. It has flip turn now. Has strong priority. It's almost always going to be specs, but a substitute calm mindset could also be good. Um, Revivum, classic terror captain. You have to prepare not to get swept by this. Florges was one of the kill leaders in this division last year, but it's a huge spadef wall, but it can also set up doing a type of physical uh, defense calm mindset similar to what Primarina would do or what uh, Diancy does. 
H Avalog is another one that gets a massive boost from being Terra. You, t I wish it was Terra Water. Maybe there's a re it act this team actually kind of needs a water, so it should be Terra Water. Uh, Rock Rops, if you listen to this, Terra Fighting is bait. Don't run Terra Fighting. Run Terra Water. Um, and then we have Dio Agreed. Speed. If, if people didn't know, uh, Dio Speed can use Nasty Plot now. This is not, and I was guilty of this too because I'm an Ubers player and I'd never seen this run offensive before, right? This was always screens and taunts and hazards. This thing is a late game cleaner with Nasty Plot. Other than maybe Spectre, it's the best at what it does in the format. The fact this went in the third round is crazy. I promise you this is good. You build the whole game plan around bringing this thing in at the end of the game with Life Orb, Nasty Plot, Thunderbolt, Ice Beam, uh, Psychic Move, or whatever coverage you need this week. It will roll and just finish the game even if it looks like you're down 1-5. You actually won. Um, this is definitely a championship team. I don't really know what to change on this team other than... You could probably get something else for Ambipom. I think it needs a special water resistance other than just big fat Florges. So I think I mentioned this for somebody earlier, but the pre-evolution of uh, Quackavolt is pretty good on this team as just another spinner because uh, Avalug won't always want to come and Mandy Buzz doesn't always want to slot Defog because it can do other things. Um... But just really any, even Polywhirl as a water absorb mon, like anything that can just resist water, because I think you have an undercover just, especially physical water weakness on this team. Um, I, I, I just want to add one thing that um, we spoke about earlier. Sorry, inter interrupt again. Um, I think Indeedy would be really, really nice to stop other priority mons because Dio speed is obviously frail as hell. Yeah. Um, would be actually really nice to ensure a late game in Didi, or the ability for late game um, Dio to just absolutely cook with um, specs or a band, um, even a mixed set or a twisted spoon or whatever you want to run on it. Yep. Um, yeah, that was just that was just something that we picked up on could be quite nice um, to to knock out of the park. Okay, I think we're coming up near the end, ladies and gentlemen. Let's see what's next. Yep. Oh, the, last the last team. And I just, can, can, I do, can I do this team? Yeah, go ahead. Can, I, I, I just... We both have got a bit of a giggle out of this. Like, this is like the ultimate high school team, right? You've got the, the solid, just chunky dude. He's just a nugget. He's a nice guy. Everyone likes him. Just the, the hard worker. That's your, that's your iron trap. You've got the drag queens that have been teaching in schools lately. You've got the bookworm. You've got the uh, flamboyant kid that likes to dance. You've got the toxic friend. You've got the jock. You've got the, the, the smart kid that's just, just way too intelligent, but he knows it. You've got the emo girl. You've got that fat kid that's a lineman in America or he's uh, in Australia. He's a front rower. And then you've got Donald Trump who just wants to be the president. Like, this is just the ultimate high school team. I thought it was hilarious. But on the side note, this team's synergy is absolutely phenomenal. Uh, Quackoval is probably one of the most value picks in the draft. I think you've men mentioned the period. The point that like that Quackoval can accidentally sweep teams is just phenomenal. Um, and Incineroar is just really, really nice with it. Um, and the Toxic Spikes, along with uh, the ability for Hydrapple to um, just, if you want to switch in and it's not a um, not a fairy type, you might be copping a 100 and what, 140, 150 power base power move to the face, or it might be 160 base power move to the face, Dragon Stab, um, really, really tough. Um, but yeah, I just wanted to, yeah, basically give you the funny high school team meme I thought this was. Well, um, but I'll I'll let um I'll let you finish off on this team because it's 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 you really really like it so I'm going to um I'll, I, I I'll like, keep my mouth shut and let yeah. you uh, this team it. is almost perfect to me. It's just missing. Uh, this team is really slow. Whoopers. It's really really slow for draft standards. One hundred six base max speed and treads is really never going to be a choice scarfer. I guess you could do people do booster speed sometimes. You could not do it, but it's probably not very good. Um. Enamorous is a normal scarf, although it's probably better with specs. 
And uh, Miss Maggie's will probably be uh, Scarf sometimes. Maybe Glamora. Glamora's not bad with Scarf. But we don't even have that many, like, Scarf things here or things that boost speed except for Quavel. Um Other than that, though, this is almost a perfect team. Like, I love all these guys. I love Hydrapple. I like Specs Hydrapple. That's my kind of guy. Um, AV is obviously still good defensive AV, but I like specs and that you can just have a regenerator mind that you keep Dracoing and leaf storming and then switch it out and switch it back in. Um, slow King fits great here. So we have regen core with enamorous. Who's one of the best offensive Pokemon Moonblast plus earth power, crazy coverage. Um, we have Glamour to set up the hazards, but also hopefully I see some offensive potential on Glamour here. Cause I think that, uh, Rock Polish Meteor Beam is underutilized on this thing because it has actually a huge special attack. Um, treads, always just there doing Treads things. And like we said, Quiquavel, one of my favorite guys. Every season when I play against it or use it in mocks, I'm like, this thing, like you mentioned, the fact it can just pick something off and get a Dragon Dance is absolutely crazy, right? Like that's nuts. It has tremendous coverage, multiple switch moves and priority. Incineroar without Terra is not nearly as good. So I had Incineroar last no. season, and with Terra, it's really good. Incineroar, famously the best doubles Pokemon ever. By like, if you don't know that, it's true. Better than Ultra Necrozma, Mega Rayquaza, Incineroar, best doubles Pokemon of all time. But in, yeah, we'll, we'll 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 click we'll click my video about it. Yes, it is unequivocally. It's crazy, but it's still really good in singles. Has huge bulk. With Intimidate, obviously, it has huge bulk with really big attack and Stab Knockoff, which we mentioned earlier with Alolan Muck, I believe. Stab Knockoff, if you have it, that's like a 50-point mod in and of itself, just on Stab Knockoff. And Incineroar has big attack with no investment. Parting Shot is a crazy move. It also has U-Turn if people start running Clear Amulet on it, which they waste a move slot and then you invalidate it. Very good. Um, Will-O-Wisp. Uh, all kinds of stuff this thing can do, right? But it would be better if it could Terra Fairy and Terra War. One thing, or Terra I, Gross. I, yeah. One thing that I would recommend for this team personally, I see Hisui and Electrode on the free agent market. I think it's exactly what this team needs. Um, you'd have to. Yeah. I, I think Satitan is unnecessary on this team, Whoopers. I think you have enough offense. Obviously, it's clear what you're doing. I don't think the mode will beat the good teams. You might roll a bad team with that, but the good teams I don't think are going to lose to Chili Reception and a Belly Drum. I just don't think it's going to work uh, in a meaningful game. But I think Hisuian Electrode is exactly what your team needs and provides a ton of uh, useful speed as well as offense. And yeah, you're going to have to drop the Terra on Miss Mag, but I don't think it's... Ne it's solid Terra, but it's not like necessary for this team to work. So whatever you do, I would just try to find some more speed because 106 speed max, I don't think it's going to win a championship. As balanced as this team is, I think it, it opens up too many options for too many things that we're seeing Specs, Dragapult with modest nature. I'll get you with bulk also. Like it's just, it's not, I, I think it's too crippling of a weakness for a championship team. But with one change, this would this team probably would have been number one. Yeah, that's that's it. Um, yeah, that's yeah. It can Hisui and Electro Terra. Yes. yes. Just off top. Yeah. Yes. So that would be absolutely terrible. I, I can tell you right now, this is the first time I have not seen Hisui and Electro go in a draft when it can Terra. That's the, the, just the first time yeah, I've, I've the seen only that. Outside of that addition would be they couldn't use Miss Mag, or if they wanted to keep the Titan for whatever reason, they couldn't use the Titan because it's ninety points. But I think it would be worth it, Whoopers, even if you wanted to just drop Miss Mag and Satitan and get Electro and then fill in like some gaps type wise. I think it would be more valuable for your team, in my opinion. Like I think it would it would put you number one in it, like it, it, I'd have to relook at it, but I'm pretty sure it would put you number one, like if you had that. If not very close. Yes. Um so that's And with with Yeah, that's all we have, right? Yeah, I think that's it. That's that's all we've got time for, and that's it's been a whole, it's been a whole video, and it's yeah. been a bit of a long, long uh, event for me and you because we've been, uh, we were speaking probably an hour and a half before yeah. uh, the video actually kicked off. Yeah. Before we go, uh, Doza, give the people a championship prediction. Who you got? I think, mm, 
look, it's look. I know I, I, I'm never not going to back my boy Jace. Uh, I know Andy. If it's the Andy, I think it's, it is Andy. If he wants to win, he he will just nearly just win. Um, but I can't go past the Worcester Rooster, the Whoopers. The, this team, man, like the fact that not just that their team is cool, it's a funny mean team as well. Um, when I when I've seen that, but is this guy won in season the one you know for won the top division two seasons ago? Yes. So for him to go from first to last, it to me just says. He tried really, really hard one season, and last season he just didn't care. Um, so if he turns up this season and he cares and he wants to get his name back on the list, this guy, and no one is stopping him. Um, I think it's time for Tokyo as well. He's he's up there. I think it's time for Tokyo to um, take the next step. Um, and I, I seriously believe he has the roster to do it. Um, and obviously Drew from uh, and Drew and that Sun team with a few adjustments. Um, I'm interested to see how the Swadloons coach is, goes on his on his return, um, just because he hasn't played draft. You know, he had a season off. I don't know how much Monzi's played, but yeah, if I'm if I'm gonna have to pick a pick a guy, I'm, I'm gonna go with Worcester because I just a Worcester. I, I, I'm I'm probably butchering his name, but the Whoopers. Um, I just can't see how a guy who goes from winning uh, your Nova against yourself, Nightmare Ben, um, drops out of the main league. Um, so. Yeah, he's yeah. my guy. If he turns up and wants to win the draft, he will win the draft. Yeah, not to be boring, but I agree. I'm going to go with Whoopers over Tokyo Six Tokens in the finals. Um, again, I Whoopers, I really think you should make a pickup of something with speed, but I like this team so much, and when the one of the better coaches probably has one of the better teams, it's hard to bet against them. So looks like we're unanimous. Whoopers, pressure's on, big man. Better win, or it's a choke job. <laughs> okay. Um, well, guys, just just to put you all in, we will uh, myself and uh, Zah and um, Ben and and a few of the other boys will be bringing you um, hopefully every week. We'll be trying to bring you uh, power rankings um, or uh, at least a pickums, like a pickums and a power rankings. Probably will be together as a video. Uh, we might do a bit of a mid-season recap if we have time, um, just to cover trades and that sort of stuff. I'll see. You know, it all depends on what both of us are doing time-wise. Um, but yeah, that's that's pretty much it for me. Have you got anything else? No, we just want to thank everybody for watching, guys. Also, especially in these divi all divisions, but guys, remember to have fun. This isn't that serious, and to be honest with you, none of us are really that good to begin with. So make sure first and foremost you're having fun, and um, if you do lose, you know lose with grace. If you win, win with grace. No uh, d ish behavior around here. Yeah, learn, learn learn from those. Uh, t take the positives out of every situation. Um, I do want to touch on that though. Uh, obviously, last I've mentioned it a couple of times about um, a bit of a fortunate for for myself last season. Uh, it's one thing you just mentioned about is just it's just for fun. This is just a game. It doesn't matter. Um, so you know, if you make good friendships and stuff, don't let. Don't let dumb things like a Pokemon game ruin a friendship over like for nothing. Um, it is what it is. But that's um, tasks out, guys. Good luck to all the teams this season and um, all the other divisions as well. Um, yeah, peace. And we are out.